everybody. Coach Jenny here, the crazy, fabulous team of mine here. I'm with Ross Brand and Monique Johnson and Karen Graves in Spirit. So as you guys know, we are doing a massive campaign. We're winding down a massive campaign to get your votes for South by Southwest. Myself and these three individuals have decided to put ourselves in the running to share a panel called Facebook Live, build a tr build tribes and actually make money. Why can't I get that right once? Anyway, so we are begging the South by Southwest people to pay attention to us and let us come to South by Southwest in March. And as part of that uh, process, we need your votes. So I posted below um, the link livestreamuniverse.com forward slash SXSW. Um, thank you so much, Ross, for putting that together to make it easy to say. And um, it's easier to say than the, the gobbledygook of South by Southwest anyway. It's and not that easy to say, but it's... <laughs> we're getting better. We're getting better. So anyway, to so remember. what we decided to do is to bring you pieces of content about Facebook Live and lots of different strategies. And each day, one of us are taking a day. And today is Karen's day, but we believe in vacation. And Karen is with her family in beautiful Aruba. Oh leaving us alone. And we decided to take her slot to talk about something near and dear to our heart, which is how what, how important is it to show your personality when you Facebook Live? So we're just gonna have a free for all conversation about personality and Facebook Live. So if my first question, you guys, uh, why does it matter? Why does personality matter? Because, <laughs> yes. okay, I, I just want you guys to think about like, if you gone to college, high school, elementary school, and you had one of those subjects, right, that were like the most boring thing you could think of. And I'm sure people have had the experience where you have that person where it's like the lecturer or the instructor, the teacher, whatever, talks in a monotone voice and is the most boring thing ever. But you have another type of topic where it's hard, but you were able to get through it because the professor was cool. Like they had the personality. They knew that they were, you know, teaching a, a very boring topic. So how can I get my students to really register with what I'm saying in the content? And the thing, the same thing applies, in my opinion, with Facebook live streaming. Um, and especially if you're in a niche where you're trying to get people to learn more about you or it may not be something that's popular, like your personality is what is going to make people like you and at least hear what you have to say versus like completely ignore you or, you know, completely tune out. Yeah. Um, I feel like, you know, entertainment trumps education hands down. So if you're entertaining, at least it makes you relatable. It makes people like you. And then it leads on to the, the sales, right? Which Karen, that's her Specialty. That's the whole thing, right? Absolutely. Ross, why is personality online, specifically on Facebook Live, important? Well, I think um, a lot like Monique said that, you know, if you're trying to do business and, and attract customers and things like that, it's their relationship to you and who you are that is as much about why they choose to buy a widget from you versus buy it from the, the store down the road or whatever, right? It's it's relationships. Who do we like? Who do we feel good about? Um, and so what's going to draw them back to your Facebook lives uh, the next time and the next time? It's at least in part your personality. Uh, Ten different people can provide the same information, but we like it from the person whose personality resonates with us. So in finding your ideal customer, client, employee, whatever. It's how your personality draws in that that person. Um, it's also an attention game on Facebook Live, just like it is on radio or TV or whatever. And, uh, you know, Monique can better speak to the video side of this, um, because in video, your your movements like mine are like all over the place. And that might not be the best thing. But but in terms of your your voice and your audio side, there has to be uh, the, the normal tendency, right, is to go, OK, I'm in a professional situation. I'm on camera. I'm being recorded. Let me just be very careful and just give the facts and do it. And if anything, you need to be a little bit bigger a personality than you would be uh, chatting quietly at a bus stop with somebody or in the back of a cafeteria or something like that. <laughs> so 
you need to pause. You need to have inflection. Sometimes you speak a little bit softer and you bring it down and then you raise up and you go in a different direction and whatever. And all that you have to do with your voice. Um, and it's mainly just being you. It's mainly just you have to consciously fight against that that uh, feeling in the beginning that you want to sort of tamp it down and be safe and, and whatever. I mean, obviously, like acting, an actor should seem natural in the role. But in order to seem natural in a role, there's a lot of things they have to do that aren't necessarily completely natural, right? Yeah. And, and that's the, the, the balancing act, right? So that it doesn't come across drab and monotone and, and cliche and everything. You need to, to, to sort of play bigger than you would, in a sense, in terms of how you use your voice and your tone and, and injecting laughter and smiling and, and things like that, that you might not think you, 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 you've, it's become unconscious in how you do it, like in a normal conversation. But you have to remind yourself to do it more, that you're not just speaking to this little camera thing in front of you, right? That you're yeah. you're speaking to real people and you're speaking to them in a way that you want to draw them in so that they stay with you. So here's, here's what's coming up for me, guys. And this is where it gets quirky and weird. Because <laughs> we know that Facebook Live gives you that no like and trust factor. Right, right. right. That very professional. Hello, here I am. I'm professional. I obviously don't get away with that well. Um, I'm not terribly professional. I'm not very buttoned up. Look at Monique making faces at me. I I can't even pull it off. But there's this tension between what you're describing, which is kind of a performance, Mm -hmm. right? Because we are to some extent performing and authenticity. So how are you authentic? What you see is what you get. So what you experience here in a live stream is what you're going to experience when we work together and the cameras are off, but also put on a bigger than life, kind of very energized, very engaging performance. How do you balance those things? Performance and authenticity. Well, let me just say that when I meet most people who I like as live streamers, um, in real life, often having a conversation with them in real life isn't that different than having a conversation with them online or watching their live. St- like they're who you expected that they would be. Yeah. Um, so even though you are aware that there's an audience and that you need to uh, keep people engaged and bring your personality, it's sort of like, uh, you know, Remembering that there's one way you act at a social event and there's another way you act when you're reading a book at four in the morning in your bedroom or whatever. Right. (laughs) And so you're just really bringing that authentic part of you that you would bring to a social event or to hanging out with friends or whatever. And remember that that's what's going on, even though the friend may not be sitting in the same room with you or whatever. And um And so that's where you sometimes have to rev it up a little bit to remember that, you know, that animated you that comes out when you're with your best friends and whatever needs to be uh, a large part of what you're sharing with the audience, minus the things that wouldn't be appropriate to say, you know, (laughs) except if you were around your closest friends. Yeah, well, I love that because I have noticed that depending on what I'm talking about and who I'm talking to in my live streams. Mm -hmm. a different part of my personality is coming out. It's always authentically me. I don't really know how to be inauthentically me. But on a, you know, like when we're talking about South by Southwest, I'm a little more put together. (laughs) But when I'm in my Facebook group, um, it's all out. It's right. There's two different Jennies, right? There's the Jenny that's teaching where I get ranty and ravey and close to the camera and big. And then there's the Jenny who's sharing. So if I'm sharing something about myself, I get all giddy and all crazy. And I have no issue with that. (laughs) But um, some people express their personality with props or they express it with um, pizzazz and all these different things. And mine all comes through goofy voices and all of this. Monique, for you, like, how do you express your personality? Because I know I, I've been pushing you. I'm like, sometimes you can be kind of buttoned up, which is weird because yeah. you are not a buttoned up kind of friend. <laughs> oh, really? You know, that's a good question. I feel like I come up, I guess, consciously or subconsciously, I approach it from what Ross is saying. 
you know, like when you're, it, it depends on the environment you're in or the people that I'm talking to. So if I'm going to be in a more professional type of setting, I'm going to feel that's what needs to come out. But I like that you're telling me and reminding me about that because yeah, in all, the truth of the matter is, is that people buy you, people flock to you. So it's, it's a matter of you really figuring out what people flock out to. And for me, <laughs> this is just kind of random, but for me, I'm finding like, if I drink my green smoothies before <laughs> I go live, I'm good. But there's no um, alcohol in a green smoothies. I want to be clear. Just no, there's no alcohol in these green smoothies, guys. So there's, there's none of that. But I'm just saying, um, I feel like it's also a mindset thing, too, because uh, a lot of people, they're scared to be on camera. Um, this whole live thing is very intimidating um, to a lot of people because it's not only they have to be on camera, but they they're live. So. I think what a, a lot of people need to realize is it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to be raw. Um, it's not, it doesn't have to be this polished setup as opposed to being on something like a YouTube or something like that, right? If you're trying to be like a YouTuber in a YouTube show. Right. And so I feel like, um, you know, for me just to go live is, I mean, to go live, for me to have my personality come out is it's great to have friends like Jenny to keep reminding me, but also um, I just need to make sure I'm thinking about who I am talking to because you're right. Like in my Facebook group, I tend to be a little bit goofier or myself um, or more relaxed a lot of times versus if I'm doing something on my fan page or my, and actually no, my personal profile, I'll be even more relaxed because it's my personal profile. But on your page, you get very yeah buttoned up and yeah. it's, it's off-putting. It's all, it could, you're because the content's the same, right? <laughs> the content's the same. Now, here's an interesting thing. You guys are the two of you are probably the most networked people in the live streaming community I know, right? And and you your networks overlap and and don't overlap. You know freaking everybody between the two of you. If you're a live streamer, you know one of these two people, right? So with that in mind, you know the kind of range of personalities that are on there. How do you make sure that, I don't know how to say this politely, that you don't come off as some of those faker people, the people yeah. that are trying a little bit too hard to show personality? Okay. Ross, I, I, I love that. I mean, without disclosing names, but mm -hmm. so I want to give a prime example of a great example. Like, um, I feel like for your personality, you got to accept your flaws. A great example, or I'm not going to even say it's his flaw, but Brian Fonzo, right? He he has ADD, and um, he knows he talks really fast, but he accepts that, and then he just allows it to to come out that way. And I feel like that's why he has such a a rabid um, fan base, right? Because he's providing the value, and then also the personality of himself comes out because he talks about it all the time. How I know I talk fast. Mm -hmm. I know it's hard for me to focus on certain things, but when I do, like, it's obsessive. So, um, but then there's others who I feel like they see someone who's killing it, and then they're like, I got to be like that person. And you right. can tell it's not authentic, or you can tell that they're trying too hard. Yeah, I feel like Ross Brand has a lot of uh, people trying to be Ross Brand. Have you guys seen this? Yes. Ross, how do you, because uh, you're. I haven't seen that. <laughs> I feel like you are completely consistent yeah. with your personality and how you show up. I, I I'm taking notes from you because I am I'm over here, uh, but you're very consistent. How do you how do you maintain that consistent personality no matter where you're talking? Um, probably because I'm not aware of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good I'm one. just doing what I do, right? Like, uh, that's, well, that's what you gotta do. You gotta be you. But there is, I will say this. Um, there is a little bit different approach that I take whether if I'm hosting compared to if I'm a guest on a show if I'm hosting I'm not trying to I mean it's my show but I'm not trying to impose my personality completely I mean the guest is the star and I'm trying to set them up and sort of you know provide the 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 the, the time and and temperature kind of thing and and ask them the questions that bring them out and where there's something to add or I feel strongly about something of course I bring myself into it 
Um, but when I'm on a I'm a guest on somebody else's show, then it's sort of like me unplugged in a way because then I'm there to to bring what I know and my opinions and really like I feel like okay then I I'm a, I'm all like it's sort of like a different me than when I'm hosting. Now it may be more imperceptible to other people, but it just when I have a guest, it's like I'm very respectful of the guest. Doesn't mean I don't ask them questions that. I want to ask them and all that stuff, but I'm, but you know, I'm concerned that they have a good experience and that I don't overshadow. You don't invite somebody into your home and then you take all the food before they get a chance to, to fix a plate. But when you go, yes, yes. But when you go, when somebody else invites you to sort of sing at their, at their venue, then you bring your best material, right? So when I go as a guest on a show, I should give longer answers and not yeah. give, you know, whereas if, I, if I'm hosting a line or two and throw it back to the other person and that's so even there, your personalities can be a little bit different. It's it, it's like, I don't know, you go to a meeting at, at work, right? The CEO has the latitude to, to joke in the middle of the meeting when he or she feels like it. Right. Whereas if you're an intern or something, you kind of sit there quietly until somebody calls on you. You don't, you know, in the middle of the joke, go in the middle of the meeting, go a joke came into my mind. Let me share. So there's, there's all this, like, it's, it's just like real life, right? In, in, in a way, it's like the same situations you find yourself in real life. You yeah. got to bring that a- approach somewhat. And that's where I think you see some people go off the rails is because, um, if, if if you're not the featured guest, but you're a call in, you don't take over the show. You ask your question. Maybe you ask a follow up. You offer a strong opinion. But if the host or the guest aren't saying, like, tell me more about that or whatever. Thanks a lot for answering my question. And, you know, you, like, so it's all kind of what what is your role in that show? You know, it's interesting you bring that up because one of the questions that I, I've seen us all get a lot is right. what time of the day should I live stream? And here's my answer with that in conjunction with this conversation on personality. I want you to live stream when you're at your peak personality. Oh. <laughs> the reason I say that is I was in a uh, off the cuff thing uh, a couple weeks ago. Russ, I think you were there. And um, mm-hmm. I was not expecting it to be an interview, but it felt like it turned into an interview. It was just supposed to be this off the cuff live stream, but it was at like eight o'clock at night, my time. And I am such a morning person. So I watched that replay and there's Jenny. So here I am, the kind of, I don't know, that Bueller, Bueller, Bueller guy version of Jenny. I'm low energy. I'm grateful. Nice. It was not me. You know, I look back and I'm like, oh, good gravy. Seriously. It didn't look like it didn't feel or seem like me at all. Um, And so, yeah, that is something I am working on is how do I pick a time where I'm going to be at my peak, kind of my peak uh, personality. And for me, that is earlier in the day and mid afternoon. And so that's when I'm hosting my live streams that really matter and when I want to push those out. What about you guys? What are tips you have for making sure your peak personality, the the personality you really want people to experience on live streaming comes through? Do you have any tips? I I mean, I'll say that um, I know that, you know, I kind of like gravitated to 7 p.m. Eastern as the time that I, I like to go live for interview shows. It's not yet prime time, but it's sort of the end of the day on the East Coast and pretty much the getting to the end on the West Coast, too, in the United States. So for me, that seems like a nice time to do the show. Um, but I, it, because you're, you're, you're broadcasting to a global audience, it, it's always somebody's dinner time and night time and morning time whenever you go on. And if you were if your focus is local, then even there, how you approach a show at seven in the morning would be different than how you approach it to in the afternoon show to a, you know, 8 p.m. show to a one in the morning show. Right. And um, our, our, our mutual friend, uh, Todd Bergen, Todd dot live ha- had both of us on the first week and it was kind of a late night show. OK, it was only eight o'clock there, but I think it was very much an end of the day show towards and it was very like sort of low-key conversation and um it just had that 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 really nice like late night talk show feel like what we're used to from tv and whatever 
And so I think the time of the day, like two in the afternoon or, or 11 in the morning is probably better for informational content. And, yeah. you know, maybe uh, late afternoon to early evening is best for, uh, you know, more hard hitting interviews. And, and, and right. late yeah. night is like people sitting around talking about what they're interested in and stuff. I, Absolutely. I, but again, Sorry to put you off, but I know Monique's got to run in a second. Monique, do you have any last minute tip you want to share? Um, yeah, just kind of flip it on what you said, Jenny. Um, for me, I feel like I kind of f feed off the energy of the people who are watching. If that's yeah. weird. Um, mm -hmm. If I see more people are engaging or I know certain times of the days when I know more people are going to show up to my streams, that motivates me to, to showcase my best personality. And when they're leaving comments and they're giving me the likes and all that other stuff, I feed off of that energy, even though for me, that's like energy, even though you, it's not right there. But the fact that it shows that they're engaged, I'm like, OK, that motivates me to push on and have my personality come out even more. So it's like flipping the script as in figuring out the times when you're, you're you, you feel that your audience is most active or who at least show up. And then it's your job to have them stay through. And that's when your personality comes out. I agree. I agree. I love this conversation. I just really wanted to kind of stir it up because I think with everything that we're teaching in these weeks, and Mo, if you have to go, it's totally cool. Everything okay. that we're teaching in these three weeks, we're talking about all different aspects of Facebook Live. And I wanted to add this piece about personality because one of the things I'm so proud of is the diversity of personalities we have between myself and Ross and Karen and Monique. The four of us could not be more different from each other um, in terms of how we engage our audience, how we show up in the world. And what I really love is I'm one of the, I think I'm the only one that actually has uh, personal one-on-one -on -one relationships, although these guys are starting to get to know each other even better. Right, right. Uh, now that you're part of the team. Um, but what you see is what you get. So when the cameras go off and we're just chit-chatting um, in person or, um, you know, just on a live a non live stream between the two of us, um, this is who you guys are. And so, right. I appreciate that authenticity. I think that's really important. Ross, I have one more question. Sure. There are people that are probably listening to this or watching the replay thinking, but what if my personality isn't what it should be? And they try to have a personality that looks like somebody else. Um, what advice would you give to those people to just be them? How would you convince them to just stay themselves and just do themselves? Well, I think you have to find what you can do with the medium that works for you. Just like uh, some people like long form blogs, some people like blogs with a lot of photography and, you know, art in them. And some people like, you know, interviewing and all that stuff. You got to find what works for you. My first couple times I, I hosted radio shows, uh, I was DJ and then I had somebody on that I interviewed. And right then and there, I knew that. However much I liked music, my personality was much better fit to talk than it was to DJing. I just didn't really have a – my personality just didn't flow with that. Now, I might have loved that, but the talk area is what worked for me. So um, yeah. maybe your area is, is teaching, and maybe your area is, is – uh, observational maybe it's being a facilitator and having other people on and turning the camera on them um maybe in some cases although i think anybody can really learn to do this maybe in some cases it's finding another team member and saying look this is your strength my strength is making money for the business let me focus on what i can do yeah. and and you be the the face on live stream and there's nothing wrong with that um, just as not everybody's a great writer and not everybody's a great photographer, um, video is just another way we communicate on social media, not video may or audio or whatever may not be for everybody. But I, I think it's a matter of, of probably people thinking that there's a certain kind of content that they like or want to create and probably just need to try a different format. So. Uh, if, if you don't have a guest on with you, bring a guest on, then make it about the guest and, and feed them questions. And then your personality can come out little by little over, over time. Um, if, if you have a guest on and you find that, that you feel stiff in that situation, try going solo, try mixing it up, 
try scripting some things, um, you know, just because we know that what we're doing in, in the sense of we don't need a script at this point. Um, it doesn't mean the first few times there's anything wrong. Or, you know what, some people are so good with it, with a script and what they prepare. If having an outline or having notes works for you, I know people will say they don't want to tune in and to hear somebody read. But some people can really do it well working off of notes and working off of things. So you got to try all those different things till you figure out who you are in relation to the, to the medium. I agree. I totally do. And I love, um, I love this conversation. I want to keep this conversation going and include it yeah. in, our, in our panel presentations. Definitely. Uh, so let's do one more plug. Let's do another plug, my <laughs> friend. So here's what's going on, you guys. If, you, if you're just getting here or if you haven't been paying attention, we are a panel of people, myself, Ross Brand here, our friends Monique Johnson and Karen Graves, who's in Aruba, whatever. Mm. She didn't pack me in her luggage like I asked. <laughs> anyway, the four of us have put together a panel uh, on Facebook Live, build tribes, and actually make money. Because the four of us have done that individually, we want to share um, the how-to of doing that, even if you're starting from absolute scratch. Right? We're not talking to the people who are big name influencers and all that stuff. They, whatever. That's not right. who we're talking to. We're talking to people who are starting to build a community from scratch, who are starting to use live streaming from scratch. And we want to convince you and share with you our tips on how to really kill it on Facebook Live and figure out a way to build a tribe around what it is you're all about and your work is all about and actually mm -hmm. make money from the, that community so they can do it even more and more and more. That's what we're teaching. Right. We are, we propose that to the fine people at South by Southwest for Austin in March. And they require that we gather some votes right. and get their attention. So we ask that you check out Livestream Universe. I'm going to let you finish up the plug. Go ahead while I Okay. Livestreamuniverse.com slash S X S W livestreamuniverse.com slash S X S W. Please do vote for us. Uh, we would love it if you left a comment as well. It's a better experience uh, using the South by Southwest website on desktop. So if you're at work or you're on a desktop or a laptop right now, go ahead and, and cast that vote because it's much easier than doing it on a mobile. If you're on a mobile, and you can wait till you get home. Go ahead, sign up, log in, whatever it is. If you've been there before, log in and uh, cast your vote. Upvote us, right? And uh, throw in a comment in the chat about how much you'd, you'd like to see us there or how wonderful we are or, you know, just tell the truth. You know, I mean, we're just fantastic and people need to, to hear that. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it, modest too. I mean, there isn't a more modest. We are, we are fabulous and modest all at the same time. Um, <laughs> now, what we don't know, one of the questions we get again and again is, how are we doing in this race? And we don't know. So the number of votes is completely secret, and it's not something that we have access to or anybody except for the South by Southwest Mucky Mucks. They have access. Right. But we can see all of the comments and we are so grateful for everybody who yeah. is commenting. And we can also see how much people are sharing. So on the left hand side, kind of below the upvote, you'll see sharing icons on Facebook, Twitter and and LinkedIn. Um, and we're so appreciative. We've been sharing, of course, but not that much. Right, right. <laughs> Sharing it out and telling the world um, because your vote is going to help us get their attention so that we can take this presentation to South by Southwest, have this incredible experience. And um, we're hardcore live streamers. So know that we're bringing you with us right, you know, right. on tour with us. It'll be, can you imagine all four of us with our live stream uh, tripods and selfie sticks going crazy right. all over South by Southwest? <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, uh, hopefully, I mean, this is a this is kind of a cutting edge convention where a lot of uh, thought leaders and CEOs and people like that who may not go to a lot of conventions, but this is one that they don't miss. And and being able to talk about Facebook Live uh, for business uh, will hopefully, if we can do this, not only you know open doors for us, but open doors for everybody who wants to use Facebook Live in their business or help other people use it in, in, in business and so forth. And that's kind of the next step, right, is, is not only are we, we talking to each other, but we have sort of branched out and now hopefully 
we can go to that next circle beyond, right? Like we've branched out beyond the live streaming community. Uh, and now hopefully the, the whole live streaming community can branch out. Right. And that's kind of part of this is, is really taking that message to the next, the next audience. Yeah. And, you know, Ross, there's so many things I'm really excited about. But one of the things is I know that South by Southwest is where uh, a lot of these social media platforms announced their existence. Mm -hmm. Periscope and Meerkat, for example, a couple of years ago were announced like it was released at South by Southwest. So I'm also really intrigued right. to see what else is going to be announced there and us to be right there on the ground, learning about that and taking that back and sharing it with our communities live in the moment. Um, that's something I definitely want uh, us to do. I can't wait to see specifically what Livestream Universe gets to do with that because right, if you're right. part of the Livestream Universe world, you're missing out and all of our communities. So I'm really excited. Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing. I mean, what what our panel would be would be one chunk of time that, there, that we're there, but then there's all the other things. And like you said, the new product reveals and all that stuff where we can be live streaming that and interviewing people and bringing that to everybody as well while we're, you know, on the grounds there. Yeah, we have big freaking plans. <laughs> we can't tell you all about them, but we have big plans beyond just the panel. But the panel is our ticket there, and we really want to take uh, we really want this opportunity. So thank you to everybody who has supported us. Please, uh, if you obviously can't vote again, but if you you have a spouse, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, a nephew. Have them have them vote, uh, because, again, what we're trying to do is get their attention so right. that they uh, say yes of the five thousand some panels that were proposed. Right. So um, thank you, Ross. Thanks for coming on today. Monique, thank you as well. Hey, thanks for having me. Karen, no thanks for not packing me into <laughs> the fit. <laughs> um, I'll be back tomorrow doing another live stream and then on Friday uh, the three of us will be back with Karen in spirit um, to talk about and wrap up our voting period so the voting ends Friday Get to it. Yep. awesome anything else Ross I'm good livestreamuniverse.com slash SXSW please do vote man you say that so well now I'm so <laughs> I was really stumbling over in the beginning because I hadn't I hadn't thought about how what a tongue twister that would be, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome guys. Thanks so much for, for being here. We'll talk to you soon.